The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. This is a test. I uh, hope you folks can hear me. I think I've had a little bit of technical difficulties, not to be surprised. Usually happens that way. So uh, I don't think anyone can hear me because no one says anything in the tiger den. So this is not a good sign. Ah, Mr. Bill tells me it's A-OK. -okay. All right, guys, we're ready to go. Um, let's take a look here at the FTSE and the DAX. As you can see, they're lining up, um, you know, really, really nicely so uh there's a really nice pattern the deck should be making a top up in here but whether it is or not we'll have to wait and see the footsie of course we're waiting on boris little trump johnson to see if he's going to make it through parliament and the odds are he's not and that means there's going to be some really big shenanigans happening over the weekend in the british pound and uh, it's going to be uh, rocking and rolling over the weekend would be my guess with this vote that's going to be occurring okay folks i posted the chart in there let's double check just to make sure we'll do the um well here might as well uh, get this get this one out of the way here hold on one second to see if we can get this thing moving a little bit oh dear don't like these technical difficulties um, okay yes i sent the the FTSE and the dax uh, simultaneously so that you'd be able to see them because i did want to uh, uh pay attention to one other one that we've got going here that uh, could be happening this morning we want to pay attention to it that is the uh one for the uh, natural gas. Oh, I'm sorry, Al, I didn't realize that. Okay, now you can see the natural gas is uh, uh, making a nice pattern here. This is an hourly chart, but uh, th this would also be a very interesting uh, pattern, too, so pay attention to that one. Folks, this is the anniversary date of the day before the uh, crash in the stock market in October the 19th, 1987. I wanted to do a little review of what happened because it was one of the most exciting times in my life, of course. And <laughs> let's take a quick look of how this thing all started. Let's get this up here. We'll get this out of the way here. And uh, then we'll be all right. Hold on one second. Uh, all right, let's see if we get this right. Okay, here's where, here's where it all started, folks. It all started... You see all those little, that little arrow? This is from uh, page 134 of my book, Astro Cycles of Traders' Viewpoints. This was the top in the stock market. You can see there were five planets at uh, major conjunctions or oppositions. Uh, we had a new moon uh, at the equator, and um, it was Mars was trying Jupiter very, very bullish. And uh, I had been on uh, T. Uh, W, let me see, what was that? Well, FNN, Financial News Network, in Los Angeles with Bill Griffith and Sue Herrera saying the top was coming in that day and that sometime during the uh, – the move into October, that the market would be down more than 300 points in one day because all I was doing was taking the biggest down day, multiplying it times 1.618 to come up with the um, points of 300 points. Well, it was down 550. But this is how it all started. You'll see that the top came in on the 25th. What we want to do now is we want to go over to see what was happening uh, at that time. Now, I just want to get this up just to give you an idea. This was very, very important, folks, because this was a big historical. Uh, gold and silver were very bullish during the uh, crash. They were they were going up quite a bit. Silver was up the limit that day. Gold was up the limit. Uh, you'll see where it says five planets at zero degrees. That was the 25th of August. That was harmonic convergence. The market came down into September, which was a solar eclipse. It rallied up to the 61% retracement of the August high. That was on October the 2nd. That was a on October the 2nd, I bought October puts, and I bought them way out of the money. You see, it was trading around 26.50 in the Dow. The S&P was, uh, forget it, on 280 or something like that. 
and I bought the SPY puts and for expiration on October the 16th, which was a Friday. And you'll see on Friday, the October the 16th, the market closed down sharply. It was down 106 points. When 106 points on the 2,500 a handle is uh, it's a lot. So it was a big day. Uh, I got really great prices. Had I bought November options, you can see what happened the next day. The market, uh, you know, would have paid uh, probably 25 times more than what I made. But I was extremely happy. That Friday, uh, we had a big weekend planned uh, on October the 17th, which was a Saturday. Uh, those of you that ever heard of Merrill Lynch, well, the real name of Merrill Lynch is Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith. That's the name of it. Well, Smith was granddaughter was being married at Hearst Castle at the Neptune Pool, and we were invited, uh, my daughter and I. Um, uh, Laren couldn't come because she was back east at school, but uh, Jill and I went to the uh, the party there. That was on uh, Saturday, and then on Sunday, Ed Horowitz, my very very dear friend was being married at the Bel Air Country Club in Los Angeles at a big Jewish wedding, and many, many market wizards were there uh, for that. That was on uh, Sunday the 18th, and uh, we, uh, we had a wonderful time, and uh, she, she drove down with me because I figured I'd have too many glasses of champagne, which I really didn't. It was just, just having too much fun, and we got back late around 7 o'clock at night. Uh, it, was close, it was closer to 9 o'clock at night, I believe. And for some reason, I, I just happened to uh, check with the overnight desk at Drexel. That was the old days when I still had the number, and Drexel was still in business. And they told me that uh, the markets were really crazy. The Swiss franc was up like 200 points, and Dow was up uh, 20. We had no overnight markets or anything like that, but uh, it said that uh, there was something really dramatic happening. Well, let's just show you how dramatic it was, folks. Let's just—, just uh, to give you an idea how bad it really was here. Here is the day of the crash. All right, let's just get this up here. And uh, you'll notice here, this is the, see October 14th, there's October 16th. That's where my options expired. And it was really great. And that was really terrific. But here, here's what really occurred. See, on the 19th, the 19th, you, you see that that was that Monday morning. The market uh, gapped down, and what happened was when it gapped down, it triggered all of these option guys. You know, they, they work on standard deviations from the mean, and that put them under. They had to cover because they were they were exposed. They they didn't they didn't know how to handle it. But the problem was, folks, during this time during October the 19th, when the market was making its bottom, and you you see the bottom was actually made on the 20th, the next day. Uh, but uh, the handles, you, you see, we were trading it around. We were trading it around 275 in the S and P, folks. What it was? This was the large contract. This is equivalent to 10 contracts back in those days. So it was trading a handle was trade. It was trading 10 points between handles. That's that's basically a hundred. E mini S and P points between buy and sell. That's how bad it was. There was no liquidity. The market was fall free falling, and there was no nobody standing in front of it because they couldn't, because you didn't know whether the, the trades were going to clear or not, and if the other person was going because they were in the pit. They didn't. It wasn't electronic trading. This was you know eyeball to eyeball, and that's what the real problem was. And once it started down, it kept going down and down and down till we finally bottomed. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, we're talking about the crash of uh, October the 19th, 1987. The market made the bottom on the 20th. That's when the plunge protection team changed the rules so that the stock people and banks could put their uh, – their uh, inventories at market, not at the price they had to buy it for, which was a big difference. And that caused the market to open. They opened the vaults, said the market stops going down here. That was interesting because on October the 20th, we were setting exactly, folks, I mean, you have to go check this for yourself. It's exactly the 61% retracement of the big low from August the 9th, 1982. And here we were five years later making a perfect bottom at a 61% retracement with the Dow, I believe, at 1,600 and change. And from there, we've gone to 27,000 and still going higher. Okay, now let's have a little story time here, folks. One of the fun things through my life is that uh, I was uh, had a lot of uh, coin dealers and stuff and uh, really fun folks that I did business with at uh, Drexel Burnham. And one of the things that we did was every Christmas, we would rotate, uh, and it was uh, we would have Thanksgiving, and it was really an extravaganza. They were always catered, and it was, it was just really, really great. And this one particular Christmas, we were at Bob Gomillion's house up on Mulholland Highway, above Beverly Hills, and uh, it was just really great. Probably uh, 75 to 100 people there, and we were watching football, and the kids were in the pool playing. It was it was a lot of fun. And anyway, we were we were in the kitchen setting at the bar. And uh, one of the housewives kept asking Bob, you know, Bob, would you like to have some more uh, Waldorf salad? Bob, would you like to have some more dressing? Bob was very gregarious and extremely generous. So all the housewives always uh, coddled up to him. And he, he loved all of it. And he, he certainly knew how, to, knew how to handle it. And finally, he said, look, he said, come here. He said, let me explain something to you. He said, this little old lady walks into the ice cream shop and she says, I'd like to have a quart of chocolate ice cream. And the young man says, ma'am, we don't have any chocolate ice cream. She said, okay. And she looks up the board again. She said, hmm, I think I'll have a pint of chocolate ice cream. And he looks at her and he said, ma'am, he says, we don't have any chocolate ice cream. She says, oh. So she looks at the board again and she says, okay. She says, I think I'll have a chocolate ice cream cone. 
And the young man looked at her. He said, ma'am, he said, would you look up on the board up there? And she said, how do you spell the straw in strawberry? She said, S-T-R-A-W. And, hmm, that's interesting. He says, there is no, uh, how about, how do you spell the van in vanilla? And she said, huh, V-A-N. He said, now look really closely up there at the chocolate. He said, how do you spell the F in chocolate? And she said, there is no F in chocolate. And he said, lady, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And that brings us to the next chart. And this one is the one that we're going to be looking at, which happens to be the Treasury notes. And the reason why I'm showing you this, you see there back in October the 4th, way back several weeks ago, you see where it says open interest was dropping all the way through the 2nd and through the 7th. You'll never guess what's happening today, boys and girls, Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, drops in open interest in the E-mini S&P 500. Folks, the, the people are leaving the restaurant. There's no more chocolate. I don't know when it's going to happen, but when it happens, it's going to be really bad. Uh, just pay attention to it. Uh, you know, it's going to be very, very interesting up in this area, folks. So pay attention to it because we've got some real interesting things going on. Now, the another thing that I wanted to do yesterday, uh, they asked me to, you know, to send the the AI forecast for the uh, for the E-mini yesterday, and I did. I'll bring this up here to let you see it. This is what we were looking at. Your market did top up there around 946. We dropped about oh, 16 handles, rallied up uh, about 10 handles, and then you know closed near. The, the correlation was very high. I want to do an experiment here at TFNN. I'm thinking of maybe bringing this out. I'm going to do a one-month experiment. If you would like to do it for one month, it's going to be, the cost is 5 bucks a day, $100 for the month. Only, we're only going to do it for one month. I'm going to do the crude oil. I'm going to do gold. And I'm going to do the E-mini S&P or, or, uh, or the Dow Jones, whichever one you know is lining up. I'll be sending these out uh, to you ahead of time so you'll be able to look at it. And also, you'll get a copy of my book on how to do this, uh, uh, Artificial Intelligence, that I wrote, wrote back uh, way back when. But I'm only going to limit it to just a few people, probably six or seven at the very most. I want to test it to see if you get as much usefulness as I do, because these things work pretty well. But the problem is they don't work all the time. But for instance, let's just take a look what we have going right now uh, in the gold market. This is uh, what we're watching here. If if you're interested, folks, uh, you can uh, just email me at LarryPesavento at gmail.com, and I'll tell you more about it. But it's just going to be a one-month test, and uh, this is what we're looking at. You see the, the gold top pretty much where it should have. Uh, the, and, and remember, folks, these, these, this blue line that you're looking at is a vibration line. It has nothing to do with price. It's like, a, uh, it's like a sound wave. In fact, that's probably what it is. But uh, it's, it's a sound wave that tells you when something is going to change. It's like if you had a tuning fork and you tapped it and you grabbed the tuning fork to stop it, that's the same type of thing that we see when we're looking at the market. So that's pretty much uh, what we're watching here to see what's going on. Anyway, um, the dollar index, uh, we, we've had it. We've had a. We talked about that, folks. We, you know, we knew this dollar index was in big trouble. Uh, oh, last week, well, two weeks ago, when we made that triple top up there. This is when the when the. Uh, let's just get this up here so we can see it. When the uh, euro was down around that one. Uh, 109 uh, and change, or excuse me, 108 and change. Now we're, of course, uh, 111, uh, 111.70, and we're getting close to uh, some pretty significant resistance up here in the euro. But uh, that means the support that we're looking at here is going to be coming down to around 97 in that U.S. dollar. Once we broke that, that's when that euro broke out above the 10, 110 uh, 11040 level and moved 100 pips higher because the euro is 53% of the Dow index or the dollar index and that's why you're looking at that particular one as you as you look at those things. So anyway, that's uh, that's what we're watching here to uh, take a quick look at it so you can see, you know, what we're watching uh, here, here I wanted to show you last night. This was the prediction for last night in the E-mini S&P. You can see here that it uh, should have bottomed around 3 o'clock in the morning. We went up the rest of the day. It's a pretty good idea. What you do is you match up the patterns with the ratios, and if the time comes in at one of those spots, you got a really good place to look at it, and you know that's what you're really, really looking at. When we get back, by the way, the crude oil is acting extremely well. We talked about that yesterday, that it had a really 
good chance to come blasting off off of these lows, and we certainly did. I know quite a few folks. Well, a few of you anyway uh, bought the crude oil. It's you know it's moved well over two dollars a barrel off of that over the last couple of days. So that's a, a very significant move here. Well, we got the break coming up already. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you have any questions, and I'll be more than uh, happy to answer them. And we'll see how this all handles it out. But we'll move on to the next one here uh, pretty soon when the old ring comes up. Remember, on Tuesday, we've got Tom Hugard. On Wednesday, we've got David Paul. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Tom when we get back from the break, uh, just to give you an idea of what's going to be coming up next week. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trade along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, one of the things that I wanted to chat with you about is we're going to have Tom Hugard as my guest uh, next Tuesday, and I've known Tom for a very long time. But uh, here was something that uh, goes going back into the history books. This is the kind of work that uh, we were doing way back then. Uh, this is the S&P in that crash of uh, 2007. We counted the, the Fibonacci weeks between 13, 21, and 55, and, of course, we're over uh, – 
we're over 13 and 55 weeks uh, as we speak uh, this week, whether that means anything or not. But what we were watching is the, the as the move came down, we were waiting for the market to reach one of these points. And then Tom and I were selling, and it uh, turned out to be a you know, pretty nice move. But, you know, sometimes they don't work out the same. What's different now is that Tom has, uh, he's only right on about 25% of his trades. But boy, when he is right, he presses like crazy, folks. And I mean, he, he makes oh, <laughs> makes a lot of money. Uh, anyway, uh, he's going to be talking to us about how he does it and some of the things. And then on Wednesday, uh, David Paul will be on. He's a psychologist, mathematician, PhD. And he was the one that turned Tom's trading from being very good to being superhuman. He's, he's definitely in the super trader uh, class without any any, uh, without any, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, in the super traders class. I mean, he, well, he's still young. He's only 50, so he's going to be even bigger probably as he goes through the old rest of this stuff. Okay, let's uh, talk just a tiny bit about the gold market. Uh, hold on, boys and girls. I'm hearing the old beeperino going off here. This is what I want to be seeing here. I've got a uh, a little order setting it here. Let's see if we move this around just a little bit more. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about the gold market. Uh, I believe the gold has got a chance here, folks. Uh, we're, we're, we really need to get, we've talked about it before, we really need to get the gold above the 15, uh, 1502 level. But if we look at this here uh, on a uh, four-hour chart here, uh, you'll be able to see we're trading, uh, you see around 1494 right now. We really need to get it above the, the 156 level because, folks, watch this, watch this gold chart really carefully because that could have been a major high back there with that head of the head and shoulders back on September the 3rd. And the reason why I say that, you'll notice the ABCD pattern went right down to the exact price, 1470. We were buying it there. You know, the low was, uh, what, 1466 or something like that. We had a heck of a rally. Uh, and then the markets backed off. It made a beautiful garley down here back on the 10th. We haven't gone anywhere. We've got lower tops still. So what it appears to me is we've got one more move to the downside. But if the market clears 1512, what's going to happen is look closely because between October the 1st, we rally up. That's point A, October the 1st. Point B will be at 1527. Uh, the market then comes down to make the low that it made just this past week at 1479, uh, if you remember that. And we've rallied 20 bucks from that level. And that makes an ABCD structure that takes you to the 1530 uh, level. And that brings in a perfect ABCD and between the head, the shoulder, and that target would be a 135 pattern. So if, and I'm saying if because we're 40 bucks away, if we clear 1535, boys and girls, this is not going to be a bearish chart. This is going to be extremely bullish. So that's it. Ideally, what we'd like to see is one more move down into that 1455 uh, level, washing out the last of the bulls that uh, bought down at 14. Uh, 67, uh, 68 level, and then that's where you have the big move. Remember, we still have an outstanding target in silver at 14, uh, 1660. Natural gas. Do I like natural gas? Of course I like natural gas. Just I just posted that this morning, I thought, didn't I? Let's get this up here, and we'll see uh, where do I like it. Here we go, Mike. You'll see uh, right around uh, 226. We've been down to 229 so far this morning, and uh, that's what it looks like. We're trading at 229.60, so you know about three bucks lower. It's going to look pretty interesting to me uh, to have a uh, situation where we'll be looking at uh, something that will be pretty exciting. We'll see if that's going to be the case. That's basically what we're watching. So, pay attention. The British pound, folks. I did a lot of work on the British pound that I'm going to be bringing out in the newsletter this weekend. Uh, I believe we got a chance at uh, something. If there's a big surprise somewhere, and there certainly could be, because those people play politics uh, uh, much better than we do. Because I don't know if we even play it or not, but it's uh, it's it's really quite uh, interesting to see that uh, we've got. Uh, 
some of these uh, politicians over there are saying that they're not they're not going to back this Brexit thing, and now they want to do another referendum and have another vote on it. I don't know if that they, they didn't val they didn't validate the first vote. Why are they going to validate the second one? You know, just no way that that uh, that's going to happen. So. Pay attention. Folks, what I talked about on that little joke about the chocolate ice cream thing in the, in the open interest, that really means something, folks. The players are leaving the restaurant in the S&P. There's no new buying coming in here up at these high levels, and that's not a good sign. We saw that in Treasury notes for six days in a row. So, you know, these markets repeat over and over again, and open interest is the number of players coming in. When the players are leaving, you, you have to realize it's going to lead a vacuum. You saw what happened to bonds. I mean, even though it's negative interest rates. Look what happened. Rates, rates spiked quite a bit. So let's uh, remember that. It's very, very interesting. So pay uh, pay close attention to it. We should be, uh, you know, real interesting to watch this. As we opened this morning, uh, we broke a little bit in the S&P. We've now rallied back about seven handles. Not surprising. Heck, you could go back and make a new high because the shorts are absolutely scared to death in this market. No question about it. Folks, there's a great deal of support at uh, 2986 in the S&P. I hope I still have the chart. I'm not sure that I do. I, put, I sent it out last night to everyone so that they could see it. But at 2986, there's a great deal of support sitting there in the S&P. Any move below that would tell us that uh, we would be watching a market that is possibly, if we get below, this is not going to happen today, I don't believe, but if we were to go below 2960 today, that would be a weekly reversal, folks. In other words, we would reverse all of this week's gains that we opened in you know, at 2955 on Monday, and that would reverse. But that, if that happens, you don't want to be long over the weekend. You want to be short. But that, the odds of that happening are, you know, very, very small. It's just not uh, – it doesn't seem to be uh, in the cards. So let's do that. We've got a question about Bitcoin. I want to get it up here to let you folks take a quick look at it here. Here's the Bitcoin, as you can see here. There's a potential here. This is not a very good uh, 135 pattern. And the reason why, folks, uh, both of the ratios are more than 78% retracement. That's your first sign, okay? And there's no symmetry here. In other words, between the 29th of October and the 7th, it should have come in around the 14th. And here we are four days later. And not only that, but look what happened here. Between the, night, between, between the 29th of September, we rallied up, came down, ABC, C4 on October the 7th. We go up and make an ABCD pattern at 8,800, and boom, we come down. At 8,800, that's a 382 retracement of the high way back at 10,000. God darn, that's got bearish written all over it, boys and girls. Bitcoin is headed south. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. All right, folks, we're going to take a look at the Treasury bonds this morning. As you can see, uh, over the last couple of days, we've made a Gartley again. Uh, this one this seems to have held because we've had a pretty good rally of about a, one handle already. Remember, we've come down from uh, 67, two down to uh, 59, eight handle drop. And so we're due for a, a correction here uh, in the market. But uh, as we mentioned earlier, you know, when that market was topping, open interest was dropping, folks. Open interest is the number of players coming into the room. And if they're not coming in, that means the restaurant is out of food. Just a matter of time. Well, that's what history says. But unfortunately, short covering can last a very long time. So you have to be extremely careful as we as we look at some of these things uh, going forward. The other one that looks extremely interesting, of course, is this uh, British pound. Uh, we did a lot of work on this. Uh, you'll notice the first part of this move in the British pound has completed. Uh, we got up to that exact 382 retracement at uh, 2980. It was exactly the same move that we had during December. January, February, and early March. And here we went from August, September, and October. Again, three months rally. This is a weekly chart, of course. But uh, there's a possibility if they do something really crazy at Brexit that we could make 131.90. Uh, there's going to be some really interesting work that I'm going to do over the weekend on that to show you the relationship to that and how Brexit started. Because if you look at this chart really closely, you'll notice that Brexit was on the 27th of June, uh, 2017 at 150. That was a beautiful ABCD pattern. Uh, we went short at that time. <laughs> I can't believe we showed, we sold it at 149.90, and uh, it you know dropped to 19 handles in in one day, uh, well day and a half. But it was really uh, you know really a spectacular move. But uh, there, there's a possibility that relationship there now that we're coming out of Brexit could be doing the exact opposite. So we want to watch it very very closely. That's uh, one of the main things that we're going to be uh, keeping a very close eye on here this morning. So the next one. Uh, someone's asked me uh, was about the crude oil. Where do I think crude oil is going to go? Folks, we're back to the highs that we were last Friday. That's exactly where we are. We we closed last Friday at 54.55. Uh, uh, we're trading very close to that right now. We, we've had rallied $2 a barrel over the last several days. It was a perfect 135 pattern. You you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it was, uh, we were, you know, well, it doesn't make any difference. You'll, you'll see here that uh, we'll take a look at it. You'll be able to see that's what we're watching here. That 135 pattern held. We, we're back up to that uh, high that we made last Friday at 54 uh, and change, 54.55. Going above that sets up an ABCD structure. 
uh, to a 57 and change, which would be a 61% retracement of the move we had on, if you remember, on September the 13th, when they were dropping the drones into Saudi Arabia. Crude oil opened at the 78% level at $63 a barrel. We were doing the seminar in uh, London at that time, and we did a lot of work right live as it was going on, showing that that was most probably going to be the high of this run in crude oil at 63.35. And by golly, it certainly was. And the market went from 63.35 all the way down to just a tad under 52. It dropped $12 a barrel in the midst of a Saudi attack uh, or uh, the attack on the Saudi oil fields with drones if any of that stuff is true or not. And I'm beginning to believe that uh, most of this stuff in the news is just absolutely ridiculous. And it's sad, but that's neither here nor there. And not only that, folks, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because I'm going to get in trouble about politics, about Hong Kong. But uh, hopefully the fighting is slowing down over there, but doesn't look like it is. But uh, either here nor there, we'll see what's happening. They, they, the people in Hong Kong, these uh, protesters, actually they're terrorists. But if they, if they know that China's not going to do anything because they don't want the wrath of uh, sanctions coming from around the world. So, and they're always afraid of another Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square uh, type deal, and uh, that's not going to happen too. Folks, the market has had a pretty good rally uh, this week. But if you if you looked really closely at what the rally really was. It, it didn't do nearly as much as uh, you might have thought, because if you take a look here in the uh, uh, at the Russell 2000, I know the Russell's very sm it's much smaller, of course, but the same thing with the New York Stock Exchange Index. We didn't even come close to making new highs. Now we come close in the S and P. We've come close in the Dow, and the Nasdaq did make it. The Nasdaq took it out by about 10 points. So that's a really interesting phenomenon that what we did here. Someone's asking a question about the cattle. I, I, I'm very bullish cattle. I think cattle have had one heck of a run, and I believe uh, they're going to go a whole lot higher. Let's just uh, let's just pull up the, the cattle. I, I don't have it up quite up to date, but uh, you'll see that we're certainly in a, a really strong bull phase. Anytime we get a pullback here uh, in cattle, and this is as of Friday, I didn't know what it, I don't know what it did this week, but uh, uh, someone want to update me on the cattle? Where where is Christmas cattle trading at? The last I had was 120, and uh, I believe any pullback, uh, especially a move like this, that many days in a row, a 382 pullback, is most probably all what you're going to do. And since no one's asking questions, let's just go up and pull up this. Uh, hold on one second here. Grab grab this little puppy here. Get this. Uh, cattle up so we can take a look at it. That is L, and there's the Christmas cattle, and uh, ah, we're still, we're continuing to go higher in the cattle, so uh, oh, we're up against some pretty stiff resistance right now, so why, oh my gosh, look how many days in a row this has been up. Holy cow. We got to give Mr. Z the, the sound of one hand clapping, folks. Look at this. Uh, he was talking about this when we were down at the uh, just below 100. We were making the ABCD pattern down there, as you can see, this is a perfect ABCD from the April high. We had a double top up there at 125. We come down to 107. We rally up to the 382 at 114, and then it's ABCD stopping exactly at 99, and we rallied $25. Folks, that's 10 large. That's more than $10,000 in cattle. I don't trade cattle very often, but look how many days it's been up. My goodness, we're, we're up uh, six weeks. We've only had one, two, three, four down days, and they were just quiet closes. They weren't hardly down. So that's a real bullish market. So you get a pullback in this, uh, look for a buy. This thing looks like it's ready to go. Right now you can't buy it. And the reason why is look at the 62% retracement from the double top back in April. We're right there right now, right on the money at 114 and change. And we're just, we've been up every day this week. We went from 111 to 115. So uh, now's the time that uh, you want to be looking for a correction in cattle. I, I can't chase it here, but my goodness, what a beautiful ABCD it was on the downside. I, I, know we t I know we've talked about this because the pattern was still there. I didn't change anything when I pulled it up. So 
that's what we're watching. Oh, we got a break coming up here in a little bit. Remember, folks, try not to miss the show on Tuesday and Wednesday next week if you get a chance. If you have a uh, interest in the AI for the one-month trial, uh, it's Larry Pesavento at gmail.com. And uh, we'll uh, move on to the next one here. We've got a break coming up here in a few seconds. And when we get back, I want to go over the New York Stock Exchange Index uh, to give you an idea of what we're, what we're seeing in that. So we'll pay a little bit, uh, little bit of attention to that. So I hope that helps. Uh, as we move on to the next subject, if you have any questions, 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I posted the chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index, and uh, you can see here that we topped in this market way back in January. We've not taken out those highs. We've been up there one, two, three, four, five times. This last rally we got to this week went to 13,080. That was a 78% retracement. And uh, 
as you notice, we did make a higher high in the NASDAQ by just a, a point or two. The S&P missed it by a few points, at least so far. We could do it today or Monday, Tuesday, I don't know. But uh, there, it's a little bit of divergence. That's mainly because it's only about 100 stocks of the thousands that are out there that are actually making this big move. It's the 25 NASDAQ 100 stocks that are high priced, and then the high priced stocks in the S&P 500, i.e., you know, Facebook and all the others, uh, Apple. So that's uh, primarily what we're watching very, very closely. Same thing in the transportations. I'll bring this up. We had a, uh, we've been in this really tight trading range in the transportations. And all we did this week was to rally up and, you know, test those lower tops as we've seen through here. Uh, today, we got up to that uh, level right near that top. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, as we come in here on Monday. I've mentioned many times today already. I'll do it one more time, and then I'm going to shut up and never mention it again for at least another day. And that is open interest is dropping in the E-mini S&P, folks. That's not a bullish sign. There's no no players coming in, so be be uh, be careful. That's all I can tell you. All right. Uh, the gold market, we still think we got a chance at 14 uh, 60. If uh, 1445 to 1460, we'll be able to see if that's going to happen or not. But try to do something nice for somebody that doesn't have as much as you folks. There's a lot of people out there hurting. And if you got a little bit extra, try to help them a little bit. If you can, I think it would be uh, really, gay, really, really good to do that. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip side on Monday. But don't forget, don't miss Tuesday and Wednesday. That's going to be a fun day. Days, I believe. I'm really looking forward to having both of those guests on. Tom Hoover on the 22nd and David Paul on the 23rd.